Hello and welcome to our next webinar session. Today we are doing a presentation together with our partner Kasambi on wireless Bluetooth mesh solutions in combination with energy harvesting sensors. Um, so uh, welcome to, your partic uh, to participating in this presentation. My name is Marcus Florian. Um, I run the sales organization at Enocean in EMEA. Just quickly turn on my camera so that everybody can see me. Uh, just a second. Yeah, that's me. Hello, Marcus Florian, my name. Turn off again the cameras to save some bandwidth and allow you to better follow the presentation. Yes, so as mentioned, uh, we're having this uh, presentation today together with uh, Luca and Steven from Kasambi. Um, I will do a short introduction and then I will hand over, of course, to, to my colleagues. And yes, on the agenda, as mentioned, we will have first a um, um, basic overview about us, about an ocean. Then, of course, we hand over to Kasambi, uh, allowing them to do an introduction. And then, of course, they will give you a description about the ecosystem and then also make some explanation on actual implementation and projects which has been, have been executed uh, with the combination of uh, the Kasambi ecosystem and our energy harvesting sensors. And then at the end, there's also very important, will be a Q&A session where we will have the opportunity to respond to your questions live. And uh, then, of course, if there is some uh, questions left open afterwards, then we certainly will follow up with you in an email, for example. Yes, so let me just give you then on the next slide um, a brief overview. An ocean, who are we? Uh, we are the world leader in energy harvesting. So an ocean provides self-powered IoT solutions. And in this context, we supply components, modules, and products um, supporting wireless uh, standardized protocols. So those are protocols, for example, uh, like the Ocean protocol, of course, in the sub gigahertz range, which we have developed over 20 years ago ago but that's now an since over 10 years a global standard using for example 868 megahertz in europe 902 in the us canada and 928 for example in japan but we have also added support in our products for 2.4 gigahertz protocols namely Zigbee and then uh, most recently also bluetooth and of course in the case of kasambi we will be talking mainly about Bluetooth, the Bluetooth protocol. Um, yes, we, as mentioned, are active since uh, 20 years. Um, we have in this context shipped a double digit million amount of products into the market. And these uh, solutions and products uh, together with our partners are used in over 1 million buildings worldwide. Um, so those are buildings ranging from small private homes uh, up to big office buildings, uh, but also hospitals. So there is a, a very wide range of, of solutions and buildings which are using our technology. We ourselves as an organization are active worldwide. Uh, we have our head office in Germany with our R&D. Uh, we have of course a sales organization across Europe. We are also present in North America. And of course we have also a presence in Far East. Our activities are, are, are yeah, supported by a strong patent portfolio, which we have developed over the years. So there's a hundred patents in over 50 patents families uh, granted so far. And we proceed. Um, allow me one more um, view on uh, the concept of energy harvesting. Of course, that's one essential and important part that we provide. Of course, it is energy harvesting in combination with the wireless communication. And of course, energy harvesting has the big advantage that you can create sensors, sensor solutions, which are maintenance free. And in addition, also are based on a sustainable concept because then we don't need any batteries. And of course, this combination is ideal for covering the requirements, the upcoming requirements of IoT in all senses for building application, but also other markets. Today, we are using mainly three principles, so benefiting from three principles. There is one is kinetic energy, so it's basically a linear movement where we uh, supply a generator in combination with a transmitter, which is then, for example, used in so-called switch modules. Uh, the PTM family, which you may know, and the PTM family is used by, the wide, by a wider range of OEM switch manufacturers worldwide. And they are supporting, of course, also with our Bluetooth module, the Kasambi ecosystem. Then, of course, you can also use light, so solar energy. In this case, we specifically talk about indoor light. So, of course, it's optimized 
the solutions are optimized for the little amount of uh, light you can find in, for example, office rooms. And in this case, we, of course, store the energy and you can um, work, you can have working various sensors, which, for example, are temperature sensors or presence detectors in the case of the Kasambi system, which can then uh, use to, to with solar energy and then, of course, be created as a maintenance-free sensor. And then the third method we are using is thermal energy. So in this concept, we uh, are benefiting from the delta in temperature. So there is so-called uh, Pelti elements being used. And typically, those systems start with a delta of 4 Kelvin. With 4 Kelvin, you can generate already a, electrical, a certain amount of electrical energy, which then again is stored. And the typical example you see here uh, on, the, on the right side is the heating valves, which of course take clear benefit of this approach where you have a, a, a yeah, 30 the Kelvin temperature difference between the hot water and the and surrounding temperature. So yeah, this is uh, to give you an overview about the, the concept of energy harvesting. I'm now handing over to my colleagues from Kasambi, specifically to Luca and Steven. So over to you uh, for your part of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Marcus. Thanks. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Luca Ragaglia. I run the sales for uh, Kasambi for EMEA and Latin America. Our sales team is made of 18 professionals spread uh, across uh, Europe in countries like Finland, UK, Sweden, Spain, Germany, and Italy. To quickly introduce the company, I can say that Kasambi was founded in 2011 by Timo Pakkala and Elena Lektimaki. They had a vision and, and a belief that smartphones and wireless technologies in general um, can fundamentally change the way we interface and interact with uh, everyday objects uh, around us. The Kasambi solution is based on Bluetooth Low Energy, also called BLE, which is the only low power wireless technology in all smartphones and tablets and smartwatches, for example. Uh, that makes it not only the, the mainstream today, but, but also uh, what we consider the future-proof radio technologies in the world. Um, the BLE technology was actually developed at Nokia in the R&D department at Nokia in Finland, where both our founders worked. Um, this is why Kasambi had the unique advantage, I would say, uh, to develop and realize uh, the potential of the Bluetooth low energy uh, early on, in a very early stage. Um, so that we started the development of the solution even before there were any Bluetooth low energy devices on the market. Um, back to the system, I mean, all the devices interoperated the mesh network. And because of that, of course, the intelligence of the system is distributed and replicated in every node, meaning no single point of failure. Uh, we can control a large number of devices from any point. And of course, the firmware update is over the air. Then back to the slide that you're seeing, uh, we've been found in 2011, so operating 10 years now with the first commercial uh, BLE mesh um, in 2014. Um, we accomplished over 65,000 projects all around the world. And my colleague Stephen, in a, Stephen Jackson in a, in, a, in a few minutes will present a couple of very interesting projects for you guys. And then we deliver over 1.7 million nodes. We created an impressive ecosystem of, uh, of devices that are interoperable each other. I mean, the technology can be integrated into fixtures, LED modules, LED drivers, switches, sensors. This in order to create the best solution for an easy installation with uh, the minimal cost. Kasambi Ready products, uh, this is the way we call the product within the ecosystem, uh, which are, of course, produced by Kasambi partners, are, of course, 100% compatible with Kasambi native products. Uh, this slide, you can see the application and what we can do. The Kasambi app is um, downloadable free uh, and works both for iOS and uh, Android devices. And, I mean, it can be downloaded by anybody, literally, if you want to download it now, you, you can. Um, and it's made in a way that really anyone, regardless the technical knowledge or the competencies can use it. Is it's really, really a simple way to 
to use it. Make it uh, th this makes the application equally uh, good for professional lighting market as well as for residential fields and everything you can find in between. Um, as a user interfaces, Kazambi offers uh, different ways to interact with the lighting depending on your requirements. Uh, the application for smartphones and tablets is of course the most elaborated and completed um, user interface, but, but on top of it, uh, traditional volt switches, push buttons, scene controls, and many other control points can be used. Um, just seeing a couple of, of, of example here, uh, extremely easy to create groups from the top left uh, in the Kasambi app, really, really easy to create groups. And, and then of course, you can create lighting scenarios. The gallery is, is very nice. I mean, you simply take a photo of a space, of a fixture, of a floor plan, whatever you want to uh, display, and then you can use it into the app. Um, animation, for example, this is uh, a way to create dynamic scenes. So with the fade in and fade out from one scene to another. And of course, uh, the system supports both light and motion sensors. Um, I mean, this is this is a kind of an overview. I mean, you can also see that uh, there are the Kasambi cloud service on the bottom uh, right. I mean, the network can be shared to the cloud, so you can use it and configure it in, from multiple devices. Um, and of course, you can see on the far right an ocean, as we consider an ocean, an ocean fully interoperable device within our network, but. I will let Stephen uh, talk more about it in a, in a little while. And then the Kasambi uh, Cloud API, which is made for monitoring the Kasambi network to accessing sensors uh, using the data. And of course, for remote controlling of, of our network. Yeah, thank you, Stephen. Uh, Kasambi business model, as I said, is to be a technology and solution provider for our partner within the ecosystem. Here's a list of them. Um, I mean, our technology is actually allowing those companies to customize their offer, but to be anyway, always 100% compatible with all other Kasambi product in the market. And now I let uh, my valid colleague, Stephen Jackson, to continue this presentation. Thanks for your attention. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, Luca. And um, thanks also, um, Marcus, at the beginning for the introduction. So um, I'm really pleased to tell a bit more about the Kasambi ecosystem in combination with, with an ocean around, around some projects. But first, just to recap on some, some slightly deeper technical elements. Um, so we, we want to provide um, the easiest and, and simplest um, specifiable solution around Bluetooth mesh technology um, to, to, to deliver uh, complete solutions for projects where you, you would require to mix and match a variety of different components, but ensuring that the, the Kasambi enabled devices are all 100% interoperable. Um, then to, to additionally provide a fast and easy um, installation solution, whereby conventionally, uh, if you had a conventional um, wired system to make changes, you need to move the wires around, um, install new wiring, change the wiring. Whereas with Kasambi, the, these wire changes in a conventional system are done via software. So choosing the, the groups and creating groups. Uh, linking sensors and, and the notion switches to groups or individual luminaires or scenes is all done on, on a software level by, by the application. And then the last part where we want to be as robust and as secure as possible, um, the, the products operate in, in, in standard hardware and software environments, which means that um, there's commonality across all the hardware that that's enabled by partners, uh, including an ocean. And in addition to that, um, we also ensure this end-to-end -end 
secure encryption solution. So all the way from the mobile phone or the tablet that has the application to the network, to the switches, all the way through to the cloud service, that, that, that whole solution um, end to end is, is secure and encrypted. Then moving on to uh, the compatibility side, um, we want to provide as free compatibility as, as, as we possibly can to, to partners, and, and in this case, an ocean. And the devices um, become part of a network in the same way as any other Kasambi ready device. Um, but one important thing in comparison to others is that there's no receivers required in addition to the switches. So all the components that are in the network, the drivers, the relays, the luminaires, um, um, are part of the network, the same way as the Inocean switches are part of the network. And, and so there's no requirement for repeaters or, or receivers. Um, additionally, the, the switch functionality that we've configured in, in line with uh, Inocean brings a lot of future advantages around making changes. Um, but it's still easy to configure and, and easy to, to install, obviously, in, in the locations that best suit um, the, the, the use of the space. And then my last slide here is, is um, really recapping on fast and easy installation. Um, uh, we feel very passionately that we have the most robust communication, um, wireless Bluetooth mesh communication there is in the market. Um, we, we have no single point of failures in, in the Kasambi system. All the Kasambi devices are, are listening um, to the messages that are received, for example, from the Inocean devices, and act upon those messages. Um, and, and really, we provide, we feel we provide the ultimate flexibility um, to freely position and locate the switches or, in the future, change the functionality of the switches. And I'll come on to that. Um, shortly. So at this point, um, we we have a, a poll to ask all those that have joined the webinar, um, and our question is: um, Which of the two project types do you feel Inocean Kasambi solutions are best suited? Um, would that be for refurbishment projects, or would it be for new construction projects? So I'm sure in the audience that have joined today, you have varying different, various different experiences of, of each of these um, solutions. And we would ask you, please, um, to, to vote on, on which you feel is best suited. Um, uh, coming up, the, the, the two projects that I'm, I'm proud to present will, will um, cover both a refurbishment style project and a new construction style project. So the poll will close in, in about 10 seconds. So if you would like to vote um, um, when time permits, that would be that would be really interesting for us. And five more seconds before the poll closes. OK, thanks all for voting. So it's fairly clear that you feel that um, refurbishment projects are, are, are probably best suited for the combination of Inocean and Kasambi. And I'm really proud and pleased, as I say, to now present to you um, two projects, one of which is a, is a refurbishment project. So the first one here um, is a project that we've been fortunate to be involved with for the last few years for the BBC in the United Kingdom and Ireland. Um, and the BBC had um, a, a request or a need to refurbish all the lighting across all their properties, all their commercial properties across the UK and Ireland. And um, Kasambi, along with a, a lighting partner, um, a, were introduced and we provided the, the Kazambi technology that um, was embedded inside the light fittings, as you can see on the picture on the right here, um, uh, across around six to seven 
um, buildings currently. Um, at this point in time, there are around 15,000 Kasambi nodes across those six or seven buildings in the main. And um, one of the goals and requirements from the client, from the BBC, was that there was common functionality. So any building that any BBC staff entered, or any rooms or meeting rooms that they entered, that the switches on the wall were, were common. The, the look was common and the functionality was common. The second part was that the installation of the new lighting had to be done um, out of normal working hours, out of normal office hours, which gave the installers quite a challenge around time constraints and around the, the minimum possible disruption to, to the spaces, to the office spaces. And so the Enosian um, solution, uh, switch solution, was excellent for that because it, meaned, it meant that there was, there was little or no disruption to any of the fabric of the building, both internally and in office spaces and, and wider open office areas. Um, and then in the future, it was possible for the switches to be changed and moved around, and also the functionality of the switches to be moved around as well um, in, in the Kasambi app. And then lastly, the, the BBC were, were quite precious about the custom style of the switches. And, and so the switch finish was, was delivered um, um, by Weimar, um, a partner of, of Inocean and Kasambi. Uh, they, they provided the switches and the, the, the client um, approved those switches for, for the project. The second project is a, is a new build, a new construction project in, in Belfast in Northern Ireland. And, and this is a, as a, a hospital, the acute services block um, at Ulster Hospital in, in Northern Ireland. And every single light fitting in this building is, is controlled by Kasambi. Um, there's over 10,000 Kasambi nodes. And one of the key elements for the switch design and the switch functionality was that they first of all had to be um, of an antibacterial finish, which means that the the the, the finish on the switch um, had to be such that that it could be free from bacteria, and it would be easy for the staff to to wipe down the switches to ensure that the, there was no bacteria left on the switches. In addition to that, um, we found that the functionality in Kasambi app. Um, brought quite a significant advantage where the, the switches were positioned in different locations and different environments. So on the three app images that you see on the right hand side, the first image shows the PTM device and switch being paired to the app. Then the middle image, and, and this was this was quite crucial, the middle middle image shows the different functionality that can be brought through Kasambi app to the buttons on the switches, depending on the functionality. If it was two push button uh, solutions or it was four push button solutions, um, the functionality um, was embedded into the firmware and, and not in individual switches. So it meant that the, the commonality was that there was two types of switch, a single gang switch and a two gang switch. And then the the performance and functionality of the switch was defined in software in, in Kasambi app. And then lastly, as you can see on the far right hand side image, you can select a scene or groups or a single luminaire or all luminaires from each of the buttons. So the flexibility was really very significant for the project and meant that um, meant that the, the client got the best possible functionality out of the switches. In addition to that, interoperability was very important. And you'll see in the image here that, that there was quite a significant number of switches in, in outdoor environments, and in this case, in a plant room, uh, outdoor plant rooms. And the, the flexibility of the system meant that we can provide a hierarchy. So um, the hierarchy was based on manual control and or sensor control and or time control. So it was possible in Kasambi to provide um, this hierarchy solution 
um, in different uh, rooms and areas to ensure that the, the, the user got the best possible um, solutions. And then lastly, you can see here um, in kasambi.com, there's a list of projects that, um, that can be viewed. And I'll hand back to Marcus. Okay, so thank you, thank you, Luca. Thank you, Stephen, for this uh, very interesting uh, introduction and overview. Uh, also, like, of course, explaining the challenges and how you resolve the, uh, the, the challenges in these projects. Um, so we are opening now the Q&A section. So as you know, there is the possibility with the, the program to raise uh, some, some questions here. And then we will, uh, with the time uh, available, we will try to answer those. And, and again, if we are not able to answer them all within the time uh, set, then of course we follow up with you in um, them by email at the end we will also show you our details so um yeah i will just let everybody understand the, the procedure i will read them out loud and then we will see between steven luke and myself uh, who is the best person to answer so um i see already the first questions coming in and uh, so this is probably something for steven the question is uh, how does the Notion device connect to the kasambi network so i guess maybe that's best uh, steven to answer Yes, um, thanks, Marcus. So, so the the Notion devices are connected to the network um, via NFC, near field communication. Um, so the switch is offered up to the mobile device, whether that be a, a a mobile phone or a tablet, and the NFC functionality um, enables the the switch to then be placed into the Kasambi network um, in the in the application and the app. Okay, good. No, thank you. Then another question I see coming in is, uh, um, that's probably something which I have to answer. Are there different switch styles available and from whom? So maybe, yes, I will answer. Uh, uh, the key here is the interoperability, as also uh, raised by Stephen, is of course that uh, you need to have an ecosystem of solution which can adapt to the individual needs in each project and uh, there is not only technical challenges but also design challenges and uh, Stephen uh, explained also that there was uh, has been used switches from Vimar in this project because that was the design accepted by the customer and especially on switches we know there is uh, regional preferences there's preference in each country and therefore it's important uh, that interoperability also is consistent and for the part of the mechanics and uh, as you know we are working with multiple switch partners in this context because of course as mentioned design is different colors of course on printing and um, of course the list is growing and besides for example just again it's not a complete list but besides mentioning Vimar we have of course companies like uh, uh, Gira also being supporting the, the ecosystem or Feller in Switzerland and so there's even more uh, Taco so there's we try to keep an overview on our homepage about this list. It's a growing list of partners and that helps, of course, both Kasambi and us to realize these projects um, in, the, in the field. So that is certainly um, uh, then important. There's a question also coming up. There's many more questions coming up. Um, um, there's a question, how can, um, maybe this also by Stephen, how can Kasambi and Ocean Network connect to a building uh, management system? So I'm not sure if you, Stephen, have an answer on that. Yes, so it's possible um, um, in a number of different ways to connect the system to BMS. Um, the, the first way would be through um, a DALI gateway device that we have. And, and so it would be possible via the DALI gateway device to, to then connect and control from the BMS side, the, the Kasambi installation. And, and also set up, for example, the functionality of the, the Notion switches. Um, the second option would be through an API. Um, and we have a number of partners that are becoming quite mature in, in, the, in the functionality and design um, and interface of an API solution through, through the, Kasambi, uh, the Kasambi system. So they would be the two main solutions. There are some others but they would be the two main solutions that we could offer. Right. 
Okay, so thank you. And then maybe, yeah, I see there's many more coming, so, but probably since we are running out of time, maybe one more. There's a question about um, how to assign scenes or animation to a one gang switch. So maybe, Stephen, I don't know if you have something to comment on this. Yeah, so first of all, you would need to um, create your scenes and animations in Kasambi app. And then through the selection that I showed in one of the slides, um, it's possible to then assign each of those scenes or animations to to one of the two buttons. Um, it's quite a straightforward process to follow when the switch is paired. Um, you tap onto the switch icon in the application in the app, and then the drop down menu appears and gives you the the, the list of different switch um, opportunities or, or or button functionalities that that would be that would be possible there. Okay. Okay, and then since yeah, I see really so thanks a lot. There's many uh, questions coming. Maybe one more. Um, there's also a question to you, probably Stephen. What's the typical range between one node and the other you see in your network? So the the published range between nodes is thirty meters indoors and fifty meters outdoors. Um, I, I would say quite strongly that that doesn't do justice to the mesh technology that we have. That that would only be a point to point or device to device communication distance. By the fact that Kasambi technology is is a a fully consensus mesh network, you can have devices in a network that are significantly further apart. Therefore, use the capabilities of the mesh to to extend the range. Um, but to answer the question directly, we publish thirty meters indoor and fifty meters outdoor. Okay, great. Okay, so thanks a lot, Stephen, for this. So yes, again, um, we see there's more and more questions coming in. So thanks a lot for that. Again, we will uh, pick them up and um, they are, will not be lost and we pick them up and then uh, we will we'll be answering them to you via an email so so that, uh, again, you will receive your, your answers. So let me come to the final stages um, of the session. So yeah, just an outlook on what's coming next. We, of course, continue our next uh, our webinar series and the next time we will be talking about um, an aspect in the building automation which is roller shutter and sun blind uh, also with uh, which can be radio controlled and in combination with energy harvesting sensors so we'll be presenting this on the 24th of march and on the last slide you will again find the contact details in case you want um, to approach uh, either Stephen or myself for further questions. Again, we will collect those you have raised in this webinar session. So again, uh, coming to the end, again, thank you, Luca. Thank you, Stephen, for the very interesting presentations. Thank you also for joining us for this webinar uh, session. And uh, again, thank you also to the audience for, for joining us here and uh, looking forward to meet you in the next one on the 24th of March. So thanks and uh, goodbye. <laughs>